So it's been almost a year since we started keeping ducks on our farm. And uh, I feel like I've learned a lot of lessons. So I figured it'd be good for you guys today if I would put together a video that would show you some of the lessons I've learned about keeping ducks here on our farm. We currently have 17 ducks here on our farm. Most of the ducks are khaki Campbells. Uh, khaki Campbells, if you're not familiar, are this breed that is just an awesome egg laying duck. Uh, we got our ducks actually because we wanted to start doing mostly duck eggs for sale as our first farm business. We also have two Pekin ducks here on the farm. They were adopted, a friend of mine didn't want them and so he offered them up to us and I figured hey, the more ducks the merrier. We started off with 41 ducks, they all came to the farm via postage, delivery, uh, it was sort of a nerve wracking process waiting for them to show up and like any expectant new parent, I was always really nervous about the ducks and their welfare and making sure everything would be okay. But generally speaking, the first few weeks of our ducklings was, was pretty easy. And as we've harvested some of them for meat, we've lost a few to illness and we lost one who just mysteriously vanished one day. Overall, I feel like I've learned a ton about keeping ducks both the good and the bad, their strengths and weaknesses. So if you're out there watching this video, trying to figure out if you want ducks or not, let me try to give you a little sense of some of the things that I wish I knew uh, before I started. Now, the first and most important thing that I would wanna stress is that ducks are waterfowl. And because they are waterfowl, water is ridiculously important. You don't necessarily need a pond or a lake, but if you want your ducks to be the happiest and healthiest they can be, you do have to set up little tiny pools or places for them to really get swimming. They also need to be able to dunk their heads in water so that they can practice good duck hygiene. And so water is important and you will spend a lot of time as a duck owner dealing with water. I mean like a ridiculous amount of water. Crazy amount of water. Like in the winter, I go through about 30 gallons a day in the summer, it could be as much as, I don't know, 40 or 50 gallons. I mean, most of that water that you're gonna deal with is for filling up their pool. So when they're ducklings and they're just little tiny little fluff balls, they can easily drown themselves, they can easily get themselves a chill. They don't have their adult feathers, so they're not totally waterproof, so you have to be very careful. But at the same time, they need to be able to dunk their heads in water and, and clear out their nostrils and clear their eyes, and that's an important part of keeping happy, healthy ducks and ducklings. You're gonna find that the ducklings splash water everywhere, they're gonna make a mess of their bedding, it gets disgusting. I tried and tried and tried to figure out a good solution there. I don't think I did all that well. I found that creating trays to allow for drainage helped a lot, but still it was quite a challenge and it wasn't an easy thing to deal with. And even as adults, ducks have their own water problem. Like if you look at their coop right now, even as we're in the final stages of winter, there's just frozen water and poop all around the container even though I built a drainage ditch. That is just one big poop glacier that's starting to melt. Some of the biggest hurdles I've had have been when like water lines have frozen and when we're in you know 20 degree below weather and I'm having to defrost frozen pipes and the water's freezing constantly and I'm having to run water back and forth to them to ensure that they always have access to clean water. Overall, I have found that the single hardest thing about being a duck owner and, and having a duck farm is contending with the water. The other important task that you have with raising ducks is protecting them from predators. For most of the summer last year, I had these guys out in our pasture. Um, I would move them on a regular basis. I built basically a chicken tractor and I kept them in there and I would move them every day. I would use some electric poultry netting and surround their duck house when I would let them out during the day as a way to protect them from predators. Overall, it seemed to do pretty well. When it got to be the winter months and we started to have snow on the ground, I actually moved them into a duck house that I built. It was a retrofitted hay shed. I ensured that it was predator proof, making sure that like a weasel or a raccoon or a bobcat or a coyote or a bear or any of the vicious predators that we have wandering our woods here. I had one duck that I came home one day and they had just disappeared. I don't know if uh, a land predator or a hawk or an owl or something came and got them. They were at that point a fully grown adult duck, but she just vanished on me one day. She might have even just wandered off and gotten eaten. I don't know, it's a mystery, 
but it was just that one duck that I lost so far. The rest of them I've been able to keep pretty safe. But you've gotta recognize, our ducks can't really fly. They can flutter around a little bit. So if they are attacked by a predator, they will be literal sitting ducks and a meal for that predator. So you gotta be very careful, you gotta be thoughtful, and you gotta build in protections for your ducks uh, to keep them from getting eaten by predators. One of the things I've been very impressed with ducks as an animal is just how hardy they are. Um, that was one of the benefits that I had read about as I was thinking about getting ducks. And based on my experience, it's really held up to be the case. I had this one small stint uh, back in the summer when the ducks were about five or six weeks old when several of them got sick and died. Uh, I don't know if it was a case of duck botulism or actually a, a, a parasite problem that's carried by some of the flies that we have around here. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I do know I had to contend with that illness. But ever since I got past that illness, they have been like bulletproof. I haven't had mites, I haven't had um, you know, any sort of diseases, I haven't had bumblefoot, I haven't had any of the, the general problems that you might hear you have with animals. We are in a very cold climate here in northern Vermont. Um, we can have weeks at a time where we're 20 to 30 below, and I basically kept them in an uninsulated shed that entire time, and they were fine. They, you know, are a little less plucky and energetic when it's that cold, and they'd rather stay inside than come out. But, uh, you know, they, they do so well in the cold. I have just been so impressed by how they've performed. And I mean, when you think about it, it makes sense. They have their own little built-in down coats that they're wearing at all times. That if anybody's out there thinking about poultry farming in a northern climate, I highly recommend ducks. Now, if you're thinking about getting ducks, the ratio of males to females that you keep is gonna be very important. The uh, duck mating ritual, as you can see here, is pretty rough and tumble, and it takes uh, a lot out of the gals. And so you wanna make sure you don't have too many drakes in your flock if you're gonna keep them long term. As I said, we focused in on Khaki Campbell's, which is a lighter weight duck that's really good for laying eggs, but we did get a straight run of ducks, meaning it was a random mix of males and females. And as they got older, it was pretty easy to sort the males from the females, and we ended up culling most of the males, keeping really two khaki Campbells to help breed for the next year. The ratio that I've heard that you want to keep is uh, five or six females to one drake, and so that's what we actually have here. And, and so far, that seems to be a good mix. I'm gonna start hatching out ducklings of my own later this spring. If you're interested in either buying hatching eggs or buying ducklings directly from us, please shoot me a note. Uh, you know, as we're trying to build our farm business, we're trying to find customers any way we can, and if uh, YouTube can help us do that, that'd be awesome. So now, if you're thinking about getting ducks for the purposes of eggs, it's important to think about the fact that you're gonna need a little time for them to ramp up and, and start laying eggs. One, three down here. All well, these are in good shape. All right, so we got four good eggs this morning. Nice work, ladies. We got our baby ducklings in June, and it really wasn't until the end of November that they finally started to lay eggs. And even then it was sort of a trickle. They didn't really get into peak laying mode until about February. So that's a good solid eight months between when I got them and when they started to really hit their stride. Now that the ducks have hit their stride, they are cranking them out. With my ducks, I get about 12 to 16 eggs a day. And again, we only have 14 female layers, so that means that every once in a while I've got a female who goes into overdrive and drops two eggs in a single 24-hour period. That to me is pretty incredible. The eggs are great. A lot of people love them. They're often talked about as the baker's secret. They're a bit bigger than a chicken's egg. They have a bit more yolk to them. Their shell is a little bit harder. One fair warning when it comes to ducks laying eggs is they will lay them anywhere and everywhere. And oftentimes that means that they're laying them in gross stuff and so you're gonna have to wash those eggs. Just be forewarned. Much to my chagrin, I discovered that I'm personally allergic to duck eggs, uh, and uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> my favorite part about ducks is their personality and how you can work with them. Uh, ducks are very playful, very fun-loving. You know, some ducks, if you handle them a lot, especially when they're young, 
They are very open to human connections. And in fact, they can even bond with humans. I focused on raising our ducks like farm ducks. I wanted them to be a little bit skittish and a little bit gun shy as a way to help protect them a bit from predators. They don't like to be picked up a lot and they will usually move away from me versus towards me. <laughs> yeah, see, she really doesn't like to be held. But I have found that to be a very helpful characteristic because what that's allowed me to do is I'm able to train them in a couple of different ways. I can herd them like a flock, a whole bunch of them. I can herd them and move them around to different places. And with a little bit of practice, I've actually gotten pretty good at it. It used to take a lot of work for me to move them around. Nowadays, I can just move them at will. and It's, it's kind of fun and easy. Now all ducks go this way. I've tried to do fancy things like herd them with the drone. Uh, but that was kind of a disaster. One day I might end up getting like a farm dog, like a herding dog, whether it's like a border collie or an Australian shepherd or something. And I might use them to move the ducks around, but that's probably a little ways off because I feel like if I want to do that, I've got to spend the time to train that dog right. And I probably just don't have that time these days. The other thing I've found with ducks too is you can train them to vocal commands. So every morning I actually trained them to come shooting out of their house by saying, Release the Kraken! <laughs> the way I did this was I made sure that there was always food outside the house when I'd release them in the mornings so that they would associate me opening the door and yelling as the cue to make them run out of the duck house. The other thing I did was I trained them to go in at night. So when it's bedtime for the ducks, I'll often go out there and start yelling, All ducks, go to bed. 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 Good job, you guys. I bring this characteristic up about ducks because for all of you chicken owners out there, I know you guys often think about you know, how to herd your chickens in and out and moving your chickens around is a pain in the neck and they don't really listen to you. But I've found that ducks are almost the exact opposite of that and it's kind of cool. They perform more like a cattle or sheep when you think about their flock mentality than the chickens which seem to scatter everywhere and do whatever the heck they want. So after a year of duck farming, I can happily say ducks are awesome. 